Good afternoon, everybody. Joe with NDB Aviation, and today I'd like to take the time and talk to you about a product, the Honeycomb Aeronautical, what was once known as the Alpha XPC, but now will be known as the Alpha Pro. Now, the name change is coming after Flight Sim Expo down in Houston this year, 2023. Nikki, the CEO of Honeycomb, laid out the future plans for the company and the new products that are coming to market. The Alpha XPC is being rebranded as the Alpha Pro. Moving forward, they're basically the exact same product. There'll be changes, of course, on the boxes, shipping and ordering labels from this point on. But at least that inventory will be sold out. The new product will ship and we'll have that new product. But essentially, it is the same overall product. Now, Nikki did make some references to other products that are coming out from Honeycomb in the future. And if you'd like to take a look at that video, I'm going to put a link down below in the uh, description for this video to go watch that from his speech at Flight Sim Expo. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking primarily about the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Pro, formerly the XPC. Now, to get a few things out of the way before we start into this review, I'm going to lay a few things out. My notes are down below here on the laptop. I'll be referencing those throughout this video because there's a couple things I really want to talk about. And one very small point about this product that is important to me that I think it might be important to other people like me or people that want a lot of realism for that sub $500 price range where the Alpha XPC or Alpha Pro fits. So let's set this video up. First off, the Alpha XP was sent to me about six months ago by Honeycomb for me to take a look at it, give them my thoughts, and also eventually put out this, a review about the Honeycomb Alpha Pro, or when did they send to me, the Alpha XPC. In this video, I will include an unboxing video. It will be short and brief, but in the unboxing, you're gonna see me take out the Xbox hub out of the box that my Alpha XPC slash Alpha Pro came in. That hub is sold separately, so I wanna get that straight early on. Because my XPC came directly from Honeycomb itself, that was in the box. However, unfortunately, that is gonna be sold separately, so that way for people that were primarily gonna be PC users and not Xbox users, you are not paying an increased price for your XPC. Uh, I'm sure you, people can take that any which way you want, but it is sold separately. Aside from that though, this video, like all my other videos, is a one and done video. It is shot from beginning to end with no cuts. That way I can give you the most honest opinion I have about a product. I bring also my years of being a flight instructor, now a commercial pilot, a captain on the 145, and now a first officer on the Airbus A320. And then my many, many years of being a flight sim enthusiast. So my many years of just flying, being an instructor, commercial pilot, and then simming, that all comes together to give you my viewpoint on any of the products that I get a chance to actually review in my time off from flying and my time where I have time away from family as well. But all that being said, I'm trying to streamline the review process. In this video, we're going to talk primarily about the design of the Alpha Pro, the functionality of the Alpha Pro, value compared to the other products on the market. And we're going to focus, however, sub $500 market. We're going to talk about products that are even cheaper down to $200, $100 and below. But for the most part, this is going to be a sub $500 category, the area that Honeycomb itself really excels because there are products out there that are $1,000, some right around the $600 price range that are amazing products. But those are much more expensive, especially if you're building up an entire simulator setup. And that's where the Alpha products truly shine, whether it's the Alpha Pro, the Alpha XPC that it's replacing by name, or the regular Alpha, and then soon to come the Alpha Lite. After value, I'm going to give you my verdict, whether or not this is a product for you. And there are going to be two different verdicts here, mainly because I'm going to dive into who this product is really made for. It's made for anybody that wants to buy it, but at the same time, I really think this product fits a specific market and a specific need as well, depending on what your goals are for your flight simulation purposes. So with that all being set up, with that all being said, let's jump into the review and start with the design of the Alpha Pro. Now, in this design, we're going to start with the, the unboxing video. In the unboxing video, you're going to see that the Alpha Pro itself, or my XPC, Came in a pretty well-made box. The box is pretty sturdy, good cardboard, you know, Honeycomb and Nikki and everybody that designed these products and boxes and advertising took a lot of good cues from other companies out there. The box is solid. All the mold injected styrofoam and everything that holds your product in place does a great job of keeping it safe from shipping all the way from China, Hong Kong, or wherever it's being made in right now to wherever you live here in the world, whether it's you live in the U.S., 
you live in Asia, you live in Australia, you live in, you know, we could go on and on in the list of countries and cities, but you get the point. Uh, it's well taken care of. Inside the box, you're going to find all your uh, literature, you're going to find your clamps, cables, you're going to find your Alpha XPC Future Alpha Pro, and you're going to see there are some subtle changes on the Alpha product itself. So with the uh, unboxing done here, let's talk about some of these subtle changes in the design of the Alpha Pro. And I'll try not to get too de in deep about the uh, the overall design of the product and differences between the Alpha, the original Alpha, Alpha XPC slash Alpha Pro, and then the Alpha Lite that's coming, which is a cheaper product, but it will have fewer buttons and switches on it. So without getting too much in depth, when you look at the design of the Alpha Pro, it takes in a lot of design aesthetics from multiple manufacturers and design cues that brings together a really well-designed and ergonomically easy to use for children all the way up to grown adults and elderly that if you're simming, it's great to work with. You know, the biggest thing you gotta figure out is what table and chair are you gonna set up, set up your sim setup around. That way you can mount this properly and then take advantage of it. The design, it is a little bit of a large product. It's gonna take up some real estate on your desk. When you look at it compared to my old go-to, the Cessna SciTech uh, yoke that I had that I used for a decade plus, they are comparable in size, however, the Alpha Pro is a little bit taller, it's a little bit wider as well, and the throw of the yoke is about the same, so it takes up an overall similar footprint, but a little bit more real estate on your desk. When you look at the, uh, the back, the front, the sides, you see that the difference between the Pro is there's a different grill on the front, you have the uh, switch on the back to swap it between Xbox and PC use, and then you have all of your switches, including the Xbox functionality and the, uh, the really nice thing, the spring-loaded master switch. Aside from that, though, the big talking points that Honeycomb and Nikki like to drive home are the uh, hall sensor, which is really important. It gives you a larger amount of sensitivity and more precise use for the axes, so that being your pitch and your roll on the Alpha Pro. This we'll talk about a little bit later, and also that master switch that is spring-loaded. Aside from that though, the grill is different between the Alpha Pro and the regular original Alpha. And that's really it. You know, the buttons, the switches, the trim, uh, the dual trim pieces on the thumb part or the left thumb pad on the yoke itself, it all works. It's easy to plug and play. And as long as you understand how to check that you've plugged in your product properly into your Mac, your PC, or your Xbox, and you can see it register within the game controllers and Windows or the, uh, the device peripherals and within the Mac system, or also in the Xbox to see that you've actually plugged it in. As long as you know to go to check all those, you're gonna have an easy time in the sim. Slowly but surely, you'll learn how to assign anything and then fine tune the overall design and functionality of your XPC or Alpha Pro from this point on. But design-wise, it takes a lot of the GA aircraft and a few of the larger commercial class aircraft and bring it together into something that feels natural in the hand. Even for me, somebody that was a captain on the 145 with the Ram's horn, the, the, uh, the M yoke, basically, it was not something difficult for me to get used to. And now flying the Airbus I, with a side stick, it's not a big deal going back and forth. It still feels very natural. I grew up flying aircraft with yokes, so this is not something difficult for me to go back and forth on. So overall, design of this is really good. It's solid plastic. It does attract some uh, grease from your fingers, dust. So if you're OCD, you're in a dirty environment, there are a lot of people using this, you're probably gonna wanna keep a microfiber cloth nearby to wipe it off, get dust off, get fingerprints off. But the design and the overall aesthetic, it's a solid piece of machinery for your simulation needs. So with that being said, let's move on to our functionality. Now. Functionality, we're going to break it into two parts. However, one part is going to be exceptionally brief. The Xbox functionality, I have not spent a whole lot of time with it. I'm still diving in to better know all the different things I can really do with the Xbox functionality and see what I can tweak and get away with. So that'll be a future video down the line. But as far as Xbox functionality, it's plug and play. It works as expected. The only thing that we're going to really discuss real quick is going to be the difference between the Honeycomb products and say the Turtle Beach Flight Yoke system. The one thing that the flight yoke system does have going for it when you talk about functionality between the two, everything that Honeycomb does is to mimic an aircraft. So if you're gonna be building a cockpit, it's gonna be more realistic with the Honeycomb products because you're not gonna have all the features to say the Turtle Beach yoke system has. Like the Turtle Beach yoke system itself has the pressure sensitive trigger switches or trigger buttons on the backside of a regular Xbox controller built onto the yoke system. And you can use that as say rudder pedals. 
is this a negative thing? Is it a negative learning aspect for me as a flight instructor that I'm looking into? I would say yes and no. It just depends on your budget point. So functionality wise, the Honeycomb Alpha Pro is looking for realism and mimicking an actual aircraft versus trying to tie everything into one for functionality purposes. So the Xbox functionality is great. It works well from what I was able to do with it so far. And the one thing you're going for though, is you're building a whole cockpit to use within Microsoft Flights in 2020, if that's the way you're going. So functionality there, it works good. It does what it ex is expected to do. So with that part being done, that's as much as I'm gonna talk about the Xbox side. Let's go ahead and talk about the PC side. And I, this is where I spend most of my time. It's where I've spent all my time as an instructor. I've never instructed with an Xbox, but I've instructed on multiple PCs and multiple BATDs and AATs. And that's where I'm pulling from to talk now about the functionality of the XPC or Alpha Pro. What sets aside the Alpha Pro when we talk about functionality is, you know, we have all the same buttons that the regular Alpha have. We, or hats, we have all the uh, the light switches, battery master, we have the master switch with a massive change. Something that I critiqued in my original video about the Alpha was I want a spring-loaded switch. Not even the old SciTech Logitech master switch panel have a spring-loaded switch. And if you want a spring-loaded switch, you're paying or you're going up to a level of tier flight sim peripherals that are extremely expensive. You're talking about the switch panels that are on $800 pieces from say Precision Flight Controls, Frasca, so many of those other companies that make very specific devices that you're gonna pay a lot of money for. And the Alpha Pro brings all that in into a great product because the functionality here, and let me slow down and bring this in and hit each point that I really wanna talk about first. So buttons and switches on the Alpha Pro again, are the same as the regular Alpha. However, you do get the Xbox functionality buttons that you can actually program within Windows to do separate things, which is great because that gives you a few more things to work with within the sim to maybe set up a pause button and other things that you might want to use, depending on if you use this for flight instruction, because the greatest thing about using flight simulation for flight instruction is you can pause the overall simulator, talk about what just happened, pull the aircraft back and start again. That's a key point that saves money when you get out to the actual aircraft. So you can save money, you're gonna be spending money anyway, but you can save money by being in the classroom and then transitioning to the cockpit. So buttons functionality, it's easy to set up. Everything is already plug and play, but if you wanna get in there and fine tune all the buttons, the axes and everything else, it just comes down to you knowing the simulator itself. And my older Alpha, my older Bravo videos, do have segments where you can see how to actually assign the axes and buttons. So if you've been asking for that, I do have some portions of my older videos. I'll try to reference those as well in time. And I will be making a newer video as well since some of the drop down menus and a few things have changed even in Microsoft Lights in 2020 and now Explain 12. For the most part, they're all the same, but they're slightly different overall. And I'll try to show some of those new assignments now in the next couple months as I get more time. So functionality wise, it's great. It works as expected. Now, the new hull effect sensors. The, the hull sensors give you a greater resolution and uh, overall sensitivity for the yoke, which is good when you talk about trying to fine tune the axis, so your roll and your pitch. One thing with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 that I've talked about before, it's gotten a little bit better, but if you're trying to fine tune the way an aircraft actually flies because you fly it all the time in real life, or maybe you are trying to get it closer to what you have talked to other pilots about or seen online, Doing the axes curves is going to be one of the most important things. And now that you have a greater resolution with that, you'll be able to fine tune whether or not you need a linear curve or a straight curve versus a uh, slight exponential increase for input controls, depending on how that aircraft flies. Because a lot of aircraft are different, and sometimes the way that it, they are coded within the, the sim, whether it's Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or X-Plane 12, might be a little off or seem off to you. So you can actually tweak it there, and having that higher resolution is great for that purpose. Now, moving on from the sensors, let's talk about the one thing that is the most important to me about the Alpha Pro. Aside from everything else about it, the Xbox functionality, the uh, better sensor, to me, it's very important that we finally have a device that is sub $500 that has a spring-loaded master switch that fits in within an ecosystem that a company is making. Because if you look at the Alpha, the Alpha Pro especially, the Charlie rudder pedals, which at some point will ship, hopefully, and then the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, um, all these fit into the ecosystem that is going to be as realistic as you can get for the, the sub $500 per piece. Now, I know that's per piece, 
uh, system that you can set up at home. And having the spring-loaded master switch is key for any general aviation pilot or student pilot. And why I'm talking about this, why this matters to me, just stick with me for a couple minutes on this explanation and hear me out. It's exceptionally small. I know it is. I know the spring-loaded switch is a small thing. But as an instructor, when I'm sitting somebody down for the first time to start teaching them what they need to know, you know, they're doing book work, they're studying, they're getting ready for their written test, and they're also getting ready to go fly in the actual aircraft. And all this stuff costs money. School time, schoolhouse time, time in the classroom, time on a simulator, yeah, it does cost. But it is so much cheaper than going out in the aircraft where you're paying for gas, you're paying for hops time, you're paying for the instructor, and depending on what kind of club you're in, school you're in, you might actually be paying for insurance as well. So all those things add up really quick. And not to mention all the other things you take with you when you go to actually fly. So the cost of flight training is expensive. And one thing that I've always advocated for are products that allow you to teach the right thing first. And flight simulation gear, whether depending on who, a lot of companies have made a lot of great products, but what Honeycomb is excelling at is somebody that is designing or the people that are designing these products actually have aviation at heart. They, some of them fly. They know some of the issues that you experience when you go out to fly a GA aircraft if you're just starting off flying. And something that's important is having a spring-loaded master switch because in the real aircraft, when you go from off and you're turning the key, going from off, left mag, right mag, both to start. When you start the engine, the engine's going to crank just like an old-fashioned car does. And some people that have grown up with only a push to start on their cars aren't going to really get this. But you turn the key until the engine, the propeller starts to turn. Finally, the engine turns over, the prop is started, the engine is now, everything's ignited, everything's running. You let go of the switch or the key and it bounces back to both, not start. It doesn't stay on start. And with all these other switch panels, with the original Alpha, there's nothing truly wrong with them. But now that I have a product that I could recommend to a student or to a flight club or a flight school that actually does what you expect in the aircraft, we can teach the right method from the get-go and we don't have to reteach it in the cockpit. And the issue that this comes down to is sometimes this is not a huge occurrence, but it does happen. I've had it happen to me at least three times with many years I spent instructing in Skyhawks and Pipers and before I went over to the Diamond DA-40 to teach in the NG, which it still had a key, but it was a different setup overall, especially with the uh, the Fadex eventually on the diesels. The uh, When the starter gets hung, if you don't notice that, the starter's going to still be spinning. Some of these starters have a limit time to how long they can be in the start position. And eventually, you will either wear the starter out, you'll destroy the starter, or you could create a potential fire hazard within the cowling near the engine. As you can imagine... Fixing an airplane is not cheap. Some of the costs of just a starter alone are $600 up. Think about the man at the labor hours that you're going to put into fixing it, taking the old part out, putting the new part in. You're already over $1,000, and the Alpha Pro is much cheaper than that. So if you have offer me a product that's sub $500 that gives me the functionality to teach somebody how to start the engine the first time right on the first time I sit them down to teach them, I think that's priceless if you're going for realism and training purposes. If you're an arcade person, all well, the functionality there doesn't really matter, does it? But as far as functionality and wrapping that whole discussion up, I think it is invaluable to have a product that allows me to teach the right way on the first attempt of teaching it. So that's it for functionality. I'm gonna stop beating that horse and let's talk about value. So the value of the XPC Alpha Pro really comes down to what are you going for in your sim setup? Who is this product made for? And I think you can get to where I'm going with this is this product is truly made for people that want extreme realism, sub $500, and you want a product that allows you to build it into a system that you are having your own cockpit. So you're not using your mouse or, you know, most likely you're still going to use a mouse slightly, but you're not going to have to use a mouse all the time to do everything. So you're going to have throttle quadrant, throttle, a throttle quadrant or more or at least the Bravo throttle quadrant, and you're gonna have rudder pedals, you're gonna have a slew of other devices tied in. It could be from anywhere, which is a great thing about the Honeycomb products is they're a USB. You can pair the Alpha Pro up with Logitech, Thrustmaster, VKB, any of the other manufacturers out there that you like. If you like the Alpha Pro, it's gonna work with all of them because it's just gonna be plug and play into your system, and then you assign the buttons and the axes, and you're good to go. So with the value of this product, 
you are going to be someone that really you want max realism. So if you want something with a spring loaded master switch, you want something that has the sensitivity that the Alpha Pro has and all the button layout that gives you this ability to not have to use your mouse all the time or your keyboard in SIM, I think you really have a good sales point with the Alpha Pro. Now, there are other products out there that are similar. You have the Turtle Beach Yoke system. We did talk about that earlier. And if you're going to stack everything onto one device and you're not going to have a bunch of other devices because you only have a worn shot to get as much as you can because of price restrictions that you have, the Turtle Beach system might be for you. It gives you a lot of opportunity to work with a slew of other pieces on that whole entire device setup, program it the way you want, and you're done. But if you're going for realism and you're trying to build everything up so when you go from your sim to out to the aircraft to fly, so saying you're a student pilot or an avid simmer that wants a maximum amount of realism, or say you're a flight school or a flying club and you have a slew of aircraft that people are using and you're trying to cut down on mistakes, and you're trying to cut down on training time and you want something that everybody can use to be at least a time saver on the hobs in the aircraft, a maintenance saver in the aircraft as well, you know, these things all come together to then save you money down, down the line. So I think value wise, when you look at the Turtle Beach system versus the Alpha Pro, the Alpha Pro sells itself for the realism and training aspect. If you're trying to be cheaper and you're trying to put everything together on one device, Turtle Beach is a pretty good value statement. You also have the Thrustmaster products, especially the Boeing product, and there are other devices out there. You have the old Logitech yokes, you have the CH yokes. I had CH yokes, I had the Logitech slash SciTech yokes years and years ago. The only yoke I liked from Logitech slash SciTech was one that you can't buy anymore. It was the Cessna yoke. It had full 90 degree of deflection, just like all of the Alpha yokes have. But the ProFlight yoke from Logitech only goes to 45 degrees. It's not realistic, and to me, that's a crappy value statement. I don't want to pay for something that is cheap and does not mimic what I would have in the aircraft. CH products are this exact same way. And other devices that I think are no longer sold are similar in the sense that they stop at 45 degrees instead of going to full 90 and giving you the maximum deflection of the roll. So value wise, the alpha for uh, the purposes of training or realism sells itself. So. All of those other products, whether it's, whether it's the Boeing yoke, which is very specific to say a Boeing aircraft and you're going for a certain design aesthetic, the feel of that is cool, but I think value-wise it's really expensive and I don't think it's gonna hit the market and the needs that you need as a GA pilot if that's what you're going for. Value-wise, the Alpha covers all the bases really well and it knocks it out of the park for GA aircraft especially as well. So the Alpha Pro value, I think it sells itself for realism, but if you are an arcade gamer, if you're an arcade simmer, this is gonna be a really expensive device for you that if you're just going for the fun of it, it might not be the best choice. Uh, but for realism, Alpha Pro is a great way to go. So verdict, come on, I've already said it probably five or six times. I know I go on and on when I get on a certain point, I get on a certain aspect of discussion for these devices. Uh, for the Alpha Pro, there is no other product, product like it, sub $500. And I know it's more than 200. So it's going to be the new Alpha Pro is going to be $300 from the, uh, the sellers from this point on. I don't know if the Alpha XPC will be reduced in price to 300 because I know the Alpha XPC goes for 350. That's yet to be seen. But verdict wise, if you are a flight school, a flying club, an avid simmer that wants realism or a student pilot that is building an entire cockpit setup to train and try to save money before you go fly the actual aircraft, I think this product is for you. It is well set up. It is a solid product. It is going to be durable and give you years of use. So that way, when you look back and you spent more time in the sim, and then we went to fly, you were saving yourself money when you're working on some of your basic private pilot skills, then your instrument skills, and then anything else you're gonna practice at that point on, it at least worked well because everything you're using mimics the aircraft you're about to go fly, which is important for muscle memory and for retention of knowledge and then application of the road knowledge that you're taking in as you've been studying over and over again. You are now being trained to then react and do what you're supposed to with the checklist, with your flows and everything else, you are waiting for triggers to move. And having a device that allows you to get the right muscle memory and respond when the right triggers occur is important. And I think because of that, the Alpha Pro knocks it out of the park for a sub $500 product. 
If you are somebody that is just simming for the fun of it and you are on a budget, the Alpha Pro is probably not going to be for you. The Alpha Lite might be for you when it is released or some other products that are slightly cheaper. Uh, I still tout how nice the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro is for just starting. You can always piece together a very cheap and basic sim setup with just the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro and some cheap rudder pedals and you have everything you need to get started. However, if you're going for realism and you're trying to cut down on the time in the cockpit so you're not spending a ton of money out there, the Alpha Pro is the way to go. I want to thank you all for watching. If you guys have questions, if you, you folks have questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can when I have time away from flying and family. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked. Yeah, tell me what I can do better. It's been a while since I've made a video. But uh, hopefully I'll have a few more videos for you all soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy out there. Joe from NDB Aviation. Goodbye.